Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about this. Uh-huh. There is a, you know, it's just experimentation right now, at least for me. Um, it's, you know, I don't want to get in any sort of rut. Sometimes I take on uh, genres or subject matter and I'll explore it for several posts, but then it's pretty much moving on unless I want to revisit in the future. To say that I have one specific process for keeping work fresh and new wouldn't be completely correct because I find myself operating in something of a feedback loop with tools like Midjourney, where you do a lot of pushing, pulling and prodding to get it to essentially bend to your will. But in the process of that, you're being exposed to many, many images many times over, depending on how many re-rolls or reruns or variations you run of specific images. As I've said for quite a while now, curation is such an important and crucial part of the process of working with generative AI for image making. And I think part of this process involves learning how to see. It's about being human. It's about thinking, how am I going to connect with other human beings? How am I going to create an emotional journey for them? Being intentional. Um, so for me, like at times it's just for like experimental experimentation purposes. I won't go too much into this, like, you know, human connection or like deep, you know, storytelling because I want to experiment with the tools. I want to see what the AI can do. So I might just, you know, do some generic things. I will say, hey, make a script for me, make a shot list. I will do some revisions. I won't just take the first one. I, I think that doesn't work really. Like the story is just, it's not, it doesn't flow. I don't think the story flows if, you, flows if you just take the simple output. We all have different viewpoints on what constitutes good composition, good lighting balance, um, precision and sharpness versus blurriness or bokeh. So I will like iterate a bit, but um, still like to go deeper, deeper, I would iterate more. I would even include more steps. Um, for example, like if I design a character at times, like I would just say, hey, design a character for me, give me this information and I'll be okay. Um, now let's see what the other tool can do, you know, experimentation again. Mm, but if I really want to create something, I'll be okay. How does it look like? What is the backstory, personality, you know, clothes, asset, and, I mean, accessories, all these things. So there are always like more steps you can take. Like the more you will think about something, the more time you take, the deeper you go, the more meaningful your story will be. So, or image or whatever, you know, you're, you're working on. By virtue of our ability to create so broadly and envision what we have in our imaginations so powerfully using such tools, we also are contributing to vast profusions of images out there in the public sphere. So I think that's kind of it. Like it's always been like that, right? Like um, we can go fast, dirty, or we can go deep and meaningful. Um, I, I do both probably. <laughs> I mean, I, I do, I like to do everything. So in the end I do end up doing like both. Um, but yeah, it depends what you want to do. Um, but yeah, like, I definitely see a future where we're just going to be in a sea of overwhelming content where everything is kind of the same, like generating images, as you mentioned, as you're right here. Um, so yeah, mm, I contribute to it sometimes, um, but I try not to. Uh, I try to have at least like a lesson or something with it because a lot of my content is learning based, it's edu education based. So even if the image might seem generic, um, the lesson there. And for certain audiences, there are clear dividing lines that mean that as if a picture can be seen to have been generated with AI, but looks or feels generic, then it will be treated as something that is generic and probably discarded or forgotten. For me personally, I am interested 
I'm very interested in photorealism, but specifically with regard to using it to imbue what I define as believable realism into subject matters that often stretch the very limits of believability or realism. An image that is fantastical in nature and yet resolved in terms of the realism embedded in how it appears to the viewer is a really sh powerful and surefire way to create a deeper connection with the viewer. Because the viewer may question their own assumptions and in the doing, just that reaction alone is in itself a reaction. And I would always push for a reaction strong or weak or positive or negative than no reaction at all. So I make images or generate images for myself and my own enjoyment or satisfaction or for clients. However, when I'm looking at the images that I can select from to choose the ones that will actually fit a purpose or intent, I'm looking through two decades of experience of engaging with, with and producing imagery. And as a result, when I look at an image, I'm looking at the balance, I'm looking at the composition, the lighting, the precision, the detailing, the focus, the lack of focus, how well it fits the criteria of any given brief, how well the colors contribute to an emotive response. So yeah, I think always it should be some added value. It shouldn't be just like an output from the AI. It should be like something human, like something that we give to the other people. Like, why are we doing this? Like, what do I want you to know? What do I want to communicate to you? Something like that. How professional it appears or feels to look at. These things are all obviously highly subjective. And yes, we can follow industry standards and there are things that simply work and things that often won't. And yet we have so much power at our disposal to explore the limits of what these subjective realizations of quality or presentation of art or d design or content actually means. And so for this reason, I work with the machine as a tool, but I work very hard to ideate or come up with ideas that challenge me working in tandem with tools like Midjourney or others to realize that in a way that reflects my initial vision and I am happy to tolerate in terms of any deviation that maybe I didn't specifically ask for but I like and still fits within the believable realism that I was initially setting out to achieve. Oh, hey guys, it's James here. So I'm looking for people to do a collab with me on some video content. Um, so I'm looking for 10 people to do Expert Roundup Part 2. So that's people answering questions on camera. Um, about generative AI, send the videos to me and I'll edit it all together so you appear with other people in the video. And then the other piece of content I'm doing is we love ads and that's people reacting to ads that I send them and then doing one minute of 
commentary on the ad so you film yourself in both of these things so it's like a it's like a compilation of lots of people talking about the same subject so if you're interested check the links in the description of the youtube video that you're watching check the check the links in the email that you got or um the links to the each of the articles will be in the linkedin post in the description there so go go check that out i'm looking for lots and lots of people message me if you're interested and then uh, let's work let's make some content together all right speak to you soon bye